I have to admit, this is a pretty cool looking trap here. This is the second generation of this type of trap for me, and this is one that I built about 15 years ago that has proved the concept to be almost 100% effective. There was one time years ago that the door was closed with no mouse inside, but if the power goes off, then on again, the door will shut. Just on the chance that some of you watching think that this is some gimmick to get views, I have resisted the temptation to make this video ever since I started first making YouTube videos. But this has been an epic year for mice in the town where I live. In the past few months, we have had two major grocery stores in a very nice part of town shut down each for a week by the health department because of mice infestations. That has translated into lots of mice around my house and a few finding their way in. Now, I'm not a fan of the old standard snap traps. You have to figure out how to make them work on a hair trigger to consistently catch mice, and I can't imagine that being a very pleasant way to go. Plus, living in the state that discovered hantavirus, I would just as soon not have to handle the traps after mice have been running around all over them. The poison pellets may be effective, but despite the claims that they say mice will leave your house and go outside after eating them, I find that hard to believe. My particular problem in our house is that somehow every few years we will have mice on occasion get into the floor truss area between the first and second floors of the house. I keep thinking I've discovered and sealed all of the possible entry ways for them through our metal roof, but I need to keep looking because I just caught two mice a couple of weeks ago. We had our first mouse in our living area in probably 10 years at the same time. He was a tiny little guy that was stuck to a sticky board under the couch in the living room that is normally reserved for the occasional centipede or scorpion. That's all part of the fun of living in the high desert of northern New Mexico. At least this year we had no snakes, whereas last year they were everywhere. We've never had one of them in the house, but they are certainly in the yard at times. The lack of snakes is probably one of the reasons for the abundance of mice this year. But in case you don't know, New Mexico is a spectacular place to live for its climate and scenery. So the next morning I'm back because we have caught the first mouse. This access panel in a storage closet is directly above the living room in the house, so we hear the motor running on the CD drive every time the mouse runs through the electronic beam. The sheetrock ceiling magnifies the sound of the little motor, so we know immediately when one is caught. Then I can take the trap and mouse and get him out of the house. That is much preferable to finding a dead mouse caught in the snap trap. As I'm telling you about how I built this trap, I did not set out to solve the mouse problem when I first got interested in doing some things with electronics. The real reason was to solve a quite different problem, a much more noble undertaking, if you will, that I will tell you about at the end of this video. You can jump to that story at the timestamp at the top of the screen. So back to the mouse trap. This is a very simple idea that uses an old disk drive from a computer as a trap door. A little embarrassed to say that I don't really get rid of old computers, so I have an abundance of old CD drives to choose from. I also don't have a lot of patience with an old computer and trying to figure out how many screws are holding the CD drive in place. All the trap does is close the CD drive. It is triggered to close by the mouse breaking an electronic beam that is the same technology used to cause a garage door to reverse if there's something in the path of the closing garage door. The only other part is a relay that makes everything happen as it's supposed to. The design of the trap itself has to be based on the size of the CD drive that you are using. I'm using half-inch Baltic birch plywood, which is a great product for doing any kind of prototype building. As I'm thinking through the building process, I make the top and bottom pieces the same size and cut four two-inch pieces wide by seven and a half-inch pieces tall. Top and bottom pieces ended up about 7 inches wide and 12 inches long. I wanted to give my CD drive about an eighth of an inch clearance on each side from the wood pieces so that it would be able to open and close without any restriction. I simply attached my wood pieces together with a good wood glue and let that set up while I worked my way through the wiring of the electronics. Finally, I cut a slot in the top of my trap to allow the CD drive to open and close through it. 
Let me jump back to the prep work that needed to be done on the CD drive to get it ready to fulfill its ongoing purpose of being a mousetrap. I couldn't help but think as I was removing the optical components that read and write information to CDs about how many millions of dollars went into research and development to build those things. It's amazing how short their useful life as technological necessities actually has been. But all I needed was the motor that opens and closes the drive and the gears, sprocket, and track that the door travels on. All of those pieces made of plastic. I have yet to throw away the optics pieces, but I will soon because I absolutely have no use for them. Seems like a shame just to toss them out, though. As you can see, there are these two leads that go to the motor on the CD drive that, when energized, cause the drive to open or close based on the positive and negative wires coming from a low-voltage power source, which, in this case, where I'm just testing, is a regular 9-volt battery. The wire that I'm using for most of the project is high gauge stranded wire for low voltage projects that I happen to have in the shop. I soldered a little heavier wire onto the motor leads to give me a little more stiffness to the wire as I routed it to the location of the rest of the electronics. Here are the parts that I purchased from Amazon to complete this build. I just want to give you a word of caution about working with electricity generally. If you don't have any electrical knowledge, don't try this without a clear understanding of what I'm doing here. Though I'm plugging into a 120 volt outlet, this transformer or power adapter is taking that voltage down to 12 volts. Don't try this without a clear working knowledge of what I just said. 12 volts is a lot different than 120 volts. I still have a working trap and I didn't really want to go through the process of figuring out the relay again and all the possible settings that you can have with it, so I tried to make it easy on myself. I looked at the wiring of my old trap, which appeared to be pretty haphazard, and I tried to trace out each wire and see if I could reconstruct what I saw and make that work with the new components. Fortunately, the more I looked at it, the more I realized that even though it looks pretty confusing, it's actually relatively simple. I made this diagram to help me when I install the new components on the new trap. So on my drawing, here are the three components I bought and the motor to the CD drive. If we track our wires back from the motor, there are two lines that are bringing power to the motor to close the CD drive. One of those lines connects directly to power as well as to the blue line from the electronic beam. The other line from the motor goes to the common terminal marked C on the relay. So far, so good. If we look at the wires now that come from power, we see that one connects to the blue line from the beam and then goes to the motor. The other one connects to the brown wire from the beam and then also to the NO terminal on the relay, which stands for normally open. The white wire from the beam goes to the TRG or trigger terminal on the relay and the black wire from the beam goes to the plus or the positive terminal on the relay. The gray wire from the beam is not used. The only other wires in this setup are called jumpers and they connect terminals on the relay to each other. We see that one wire goes from the C or common to the positive terminal on the relay and the other jumper runs from the negative terminal to the normally open terminal on the relay. That's the way my trap is wired, and you see the results I get when the electronic beam is interrupted. The small red box on the relay with the switches on them need to be aligned the way they are on my relay. The little white dial on the relay is a timer, and I have mine turned all the way down to one second, which means that once the beam is broken, the motor will run for one second and then turn off until the beam is broken once again. If this doesn't work for you, you can check to make sure all your connections are good or you will need to do what I did when I started learning about electronics. You read the instruction sheet and start doing trial and error connections to see what kind of results you get. That's how you come to understand how the relay works and how electronics work generally. Obviously, you see that it works in my setup with 12 volts of power. I drilled a couple of holes in the CD drive housing to attach it to the base with small screws. I added an eighth inch piece of plywood paneling on the inside of the door with small screws and then used a Dremel tool to cut the points off the screws. 
After running the wire from the motor through the cage top, I glue the top to the side supports and put some weight on it while the glue dries. The rest of the process is to install the electronic components and electronic beam on the trap. I'm getting a little fancy here, but I have these small brass fittings called standoffs, which allow components like the relay to be installed above the surface they are mounted to. It's a real clean and secure method for installing parts like this. I glued up small corner blocks to mount to the cage in order to install the electronic beam and the reflector that it needs to work correctly. The end panel is glued in place and I installed a removable block with a dowel attached to it that allows me to add bait to the trap, which in this case is peanut butter, without having to reach through the trap door. I also added some trim pieces around the door to protect the plastic parts of the CD drive. If a mouse is left for any amount of time in the trap, it will begin to chew on anything they can to try to find a way out. My wiring for this trap is a little tidier than my first trap, and I used plastic clips to hold the wiring in place so that it looks nicer and is secure. The wiring itself can be configured in any way just so long as all the connections are made correctly from the power to the components. The final touches are to add screen to the open sides of the trap and install a handle on top to easily carry it from place to place. I did add a couple of coats of polycrylic to the base to help waterproof it. Finally to my story about how I originally began working with electronics. Though I have been involved in construction since I was in college, I spent about 17 years in healthcare management. My company designed, built, and operated assisted living facilities specifically for people with Alzheimer's and other dementias. One challenge we faced was knowing when our residents who were at high risk for falls would get out of bed at night and walk around their rooms. It was during those times that they were at greatest risk for falling. So we took the idea used in this video and instead of a garage door beam, we used a motion detector as a trigger for the relay. By mounting the motion detector to the ceiling and masking out the location of the bed, our staff could be alerted when a resident was wandering around their room. When the system was triggered, a chime would ring and a light turn on outside the resident's room. This alerted our staff to go to the room and help the resident back into bed and avoid the risk of that person falling. So as you can see, it's kind of up to you and your imagination as to how you can take a few electronic components like this and come up with something quite simple to solve a problem. For me, one application is to capture mice quickly and humanely and keep them from setting up household in our house.